Thomson Reuters doubling down on AI. The company announcing today it will license the Reuters news archive to large language model companies. News coming after Thomson Reuters reported it beat on the bottom line during the fourth quarter. Forecasts a larger than expected revenue rise in the year ahead. Thanks in part to its ongoing AI investments. We are joined now by Steve Hasker, Thompson Reuters CEO. Steve, it is great to see you. I thought we could start, um, Steve, just help us think through the quarter. What drove the quarter, Steve? and what is going to kind of drive this acceleration in organic growth that you all see ahead? Yeah, thanks, Josh. Good to be here. Um, so we, uh, we met or exceeded all of our uh, targets and guidance for both the fourth quarter and also the full year 2023. So we're happy with that. I think more important or a greater source of pride is uh, the speed with which we've been able to integrate generative AI in our core flagship products, starting in legal, in the content-driven technology that serves lawyers uh, across the world, and uh, it's soon to roll out into the products and services that uh, that uh, we use to serve uh, tax and accounting professionals and ultimately news professionals through the Reuters uh, news agency. So that's really been the basis of, of the conversation that we've had with investors today since we announced our our earnings. Uh, we're going to increase our investment intensity through this year, and we've talked about that with uh, with with the implied return of, of higher uh, and more profitable growth uh, through 25 and 26. Hey, Steve, it's Julie here. Of course, one of the questions that, you know, investors ask one question, I think many of your clients probably are asking a question as well, is it going to serve those various professionals or replace those various professionals, right? That's been a source of sort of anxiety. And Steve, let's be transparent. I'm asking partially for myself as a news professional, right, who consumes uh, Reuters content. Um, you know, how is AI um, sort of being used in that uh, arena? And you all also are working with to train some of these large language models using uh, Reuters content. So I'm just curious, sentiment wise, inside the organization, um, how that is being yeah. received? Yeah, Julia, it's a great question. And it's one we get quite often. I, I think it, it depends on the profession. Um, uh, firstly, and secondly, it's early days. But, but, but he, a couple of observations. The first is, um, in the tax and accounting and audit professions that we serve, you know, with a lot, one of the largest providers of content and content driven technology, AI driven solutions to that profession, there is an acute shortage uh, in talent. So the, the number of people sort of coming through graduate schools, coming out of undergraduate, going into tax and accounting and audit has dwindled over time. And so therefore, the technology has a real role to play. The number of tax returns is going up, the complexity of tax returns are going up, the complexity of orders is going up. So the, the, the demand for the work uh, continues to grow and the complexity of the work continues to grow, but there just aren't the qualified professionals to, to, to get through that work. So the technology has a real role to play. And this will not be one of those cases where, you know, there are sort of layoffs and retrenchments, in my view, because of that talent shortage. And then similarly, you know, if we go across to the to the uh, the Reuters news bureaus, which which operate in over 100 countries, um, you know, we are covering two wars. We are covering seismic changes in in demographics, in financial markets, uh, in, uh, in in China, in different parts of the world. The amount of uh, news stories, whether it be breaking news or investigative work, uh, market moving news that, that, that we are across just continues to grow and grow and grow. And so similarly, the, whether it's generative AI or broader machine learning techniques, um, there's an acute need to integrate them into the news gathering, the curation and distribution process in ways that we haven't seen before, just to cover the breadth of what's going on in the world. So, you know, we, we don't foresee uh, layoffs or replacement of journalists and editors, photographers, videographers uh, in any way, shape or form because of that sort of supply demand dynamic. And Steve, I want to ask you, you know, obviously there's, there's a lot of companies who are excited about AI and they're putting time and effort and money, Steve, into this technology. How is your AI story distinct? How is it different than your peers, than your rivals, than your competition? Yeah, I think it's distinct in a couple of ways. The first is, um, so we, we have been using uh, advanced machine learning and AI techniques for 30 years at Thomson Reuters. You know, we, we put a, a fully functioning search algorithm on the front of 
uh, our flagship uh, legal research product, which is called Westlaw, uh, back in the early 1990s. So before Google was invented, we had a functioning search algorithm associated with that digital product. And we've been continuing to invest in machine learning and AI ever since. So, so I think, you know, without, I hope, a hint of arrogance, we, we, we have a level of expertise as it pertains to AI that very few have. Um, and I think that gives us a, a, a point of difference. I think the other thing, though, is, uh, you know, one of the things that, that sort of emerged through this generative AI story in the early going in 2023 was the value of highly spe specialized, um, uh, uh, unique content. And we have more than that, more of that than anyone else who serves uh, 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 legal professionals, tax and accounting professionals, risk and compliance professionals or news professionals. And that information is incredibly valuable in terms of preventing hallucinations, correcting and training these models. And so, you know, as we sit here today, we're very optimistic about uh, our role in that in that uh, value chain and proposition. And the, the, the idea that, that as a company and more important, our service of customers will get more and more valuable um, and be further and further integrated in the work that they do. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today and, and taking the time to walk us through your earnings report, we appreciate it. Pleasure, pleasure, Josh, thank you.